Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Classic Comics. Uh, today I'm reviewing Batman Catwoman number one. So, this marks the return of Tom King to Batman after his run on Batman's regular comic. That run was marked by, among other things, a, a whiny, emotionally labile Batman and a strong, tough, take charge Catwoman. Now, Tom King's run was cut short because after sales plummeted, and he was replaced by James Tinian, who has been doing an excellent job on Batman for the last year. So, did Tom King learn anything from that failure? I mean, has he adjusted his approach to these characters? Is he going to give us a Batman who is his own man, who can fight his own battles and handle his own problems? The answer to those questions are no, no, and no. <laughs> uh, so, really, this should be called Catwoman Batman. is Because basically, this is the adventures of Catwoman with a guest appearance by Batman, <laughs> when you boil it down to it. I went through and counted, and there are five, a grand total of five panels in this comic that Batman appears in by himself without Catwoman. Five. Uh, the rest of the book is either Catwoman running around doing things or Catwoman running around doing things with Batman sort of tagging along in the background. Uh, you know, it seems like King doesn't really even want to write Batman. You know, he wants to write Catwoman, but a Catwoman book won't sell as well as a Batman book will. So he sticks Batman in here because, uh, you know, he thinks he can hoodwink people into thinking they're getting a Batman book, which he's probably right. It's yeah, it's like 2018 all over again. So the art is by Clayman, and he's, what can you say, the guy is good. Uh, he uses a lot of 3D modeling in his work, and the figures are a bit stiff sometimes, but man, I mean, his, his art is really pretty to look at. I mean, you got to admit that. So Batman is back to being Catwoman's sidekick, basically. He barely does anything in this issue. He mostly just tags along with Catwoman. Now, the plot, uh, this is a sort of sequel to the Mask of the Phantasm movie from back in the 90s. So, Andrea Beaumont, who had apparently died at the end of that movie, turns up alive. Uh, she knows Bruce is Batman, but then doesn't everybody now? I mean, pretty much everyone in Gotham knows he is, except Gordon or Bullock. Uh, so her 14-year-old son, uh, her 14-year-old son has run away and she thinks he's in Gotham and asks Bruce to track him down. So what does he do? He asks Bat, or excuse me, he asks Catwoman to do it for him, basically. Because even though he's the world's greatest detective, she's obviously going to be better at this sort of thing than he is, right? Uh, I mean, I won't even bother with the details of the plot because... Well, first of all, who cares? <laughs> and because this thing jumps around through at least two, maybe three different time periods, and honestly, it's kind of confusing, and I just don't care enough to try and unravel it all. And also, the Joker is in it, and, you know, after three Jokers and Joker War, I'm kind of tired of Joker, and I don't really need another story featuring him again this soon. So, you know, to sum up, if you didn't like King's run on Batman, and who did then you really won't like this either because it's just more of Tom King doing Tom King things. Making the hero passive and making the side, uh, making him a side character while his girlfriend or wife or whatever takes charge and gets things done. So, yeah, I mean, thumbs down, way down on this one. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you like this video, do please hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.